So tell me, guys. <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me, guys. No, tell no, me, no, guys. No. What song that you've been listening to lately? Well, you know what? I know that song. I know that song. That's not a recent song, though. I'm sorry. We're talking about recent songs. We're talking about you know top top 50 songs. Maybe not on the radio, but also on you know on streaming services. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not even a it's not a new song. It came out in 2015, but I've been hearing a lot on TikTok and on Reels. So it's cool for the summers by Demi Lovato. Wow, interesting. What about you, uh, yes, yes. Ashir? You're, you're uh, from a slightly older generation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not but old, not older from you. So, for confirmation, I mean, since the um, quite uh, times uh, right now, um, my kids are quite ah. occupying my um, music uh, streaming service. So yep. I'm quite hearing uh, some music from Encanto. Yeah. But at the same time, I also uh, quite listen a lot to Toulouse. Oh. Happy, happy to jalan. Be oh. careful. I, I thought you were going to say BTS because of no. your daughters. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> no, my daughter hasn't been there yet. Oh, not yet. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, I think you, we just have to be more optimistic as opposed to, you know, too loose. We have to, to win, right? To, oh, right. And right now, that. <laughs> speaking of music, we are now connected with a Singaporean musician, Cesare, to talk about his music and his achievement in reaching 100 million listeners on Spotify. Congratulations, Cesare! Whoa. Cesare, how are you doing? Hi. Hey, I'm thank good. Nice to see all of you. <laughs> yeah, Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you for, for uh, you know, being uh, on the show. Uh, first of all, congratulations for being the first Singaporean musician to reach 100 million listeners on Spotify. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> thank you so much. You know, we, I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we in, we in Jakarta, we, you know, we, are, uh, we, share that, uh, we share that happiness. You know, we, uh, we, we are ha so happy for your achievements. Um, now we are in the digital age and, uh, and, and, you know, online music platforms and social. How do you see that, the, you know, online music platforms and social media contribute to your milestone? I mean, we know that, you know, you won uh, Singapore Idol in 2009, but 2009 is, you know, now it's 2022. But now you're reaching this level. It is a totally, um, I guess, really off the charts. And you've been signed with major labels, but, you know, this is nothing that, that you know, um, did not, couldn't have happened probably in in, uh, in the previous era, right? When it's, everything is just analog. Yeah, I was gonna say that because uh, when I released my first album in 2010, uh. it was still like the CD era, right? Yeah. right? And I was so excited to have like my first physical CD <laughs> and stuff. But the, the thing about that was when I first started releasing that album, CD stores started closing also. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, you know, within just the first couple of years of me releasing music, it was quite disappointing because there were no uh, digital services yet. Mm -hmm. But then CD shops at the same time were closing. So just seeing the difference between the, just the reach between the two services, I think it's, it's, it's already mind boggling to think that I would have a hundred million listens on a song like this. Because previously when I was, releasing CDs, I never would have thought that, you know, 100 million people would have been listening to this song. So it's, it feels really amazing, yeah. And you can feel that, right? I mean, it's really interesting that you, you, um, you actually had your, um, uh, you know, you, you won the, the Idol in 2009. You released your, your album, your physical album, you know. You know, there was, a, there was a time before it was not called the physical album. Yeah. It was just an album, right? Now it's yeah, called a physical album. Yeah, it was just album. an album. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and you can really tell how popular it was, un un unless you get a report, right? From oh, this is the chart from a, you know, from uh, from uh, from from the radio stations, or you get that. Uh, I guess you get a report from yeah. email, right? But now you can like feel it, and you can see it, and people's reels, people's yeah. TikToks, and in, and you can get the report from Spotify. You know, congr again, congratulations. Yeah. So, Thank how, you. can you tell us how has the fame and song "It's You" affected you so far? And I, I want to know how do you feel every time you see like reels and TikToks using your song? It feels, of course, it feels amazing, no doubt. But um, I have to say, it's kind of a unique situation during COVID uh -huh. because I see all these things happening. There's so many things happening, but I can only see them through my my phone screen, you know, <laughs> and I haven't been able to travel, I haven't been able to see the fans, I haven't been able to perform, uh, but hopefully all of that gets to change soon. All right. All right, so talking about It's You, so please, can you sing a snippet of the song? Yes, sing please. for us, please, a little bit. <laughs> uh, it goes like, you, you my, my life, my beginning. Yeah, something like that. Wow, okay. 
so that's why. Oh, wow. Cesare is the winner of the Singaporean Idol uh, 2009, right? That's, that's right. <laughs> hey, Cesare, okay, I, I got I to tell you the truth, uh, Cesare. You know, uh, the first time I heard your song, I did not expect that it came from, you know, a, um, you know, a Southeast Asian. First of all, Southeast Asian or, yeah. or a, uh, a, 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 a ethnic Indo what do you, how do you describe yourself? I mean, we, we don't want to talk about that, right? But, you know, we see that, yeah. you know, uh, you are a, uh, you're um, a Southeast Asian. Yeah, I mean, my parents are actually not from Singapore. Oh. Uh, my family, my parents' family. So I'm second generation Singaporean, but my father's family is from Malaysia and Banjarmasin. Mm. And my ah. mother's family is from, from Jawa Barat. Wow, West Java. Yeah. So, Banjarmasin, yeah. uh, it's South Kalimantan, same with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coincidentally. Cool. So, uh, uh, a little bit from, uh, for the, for before the next question. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, part of your musical journey, you've been, uh, you had been stay in Bandung, in Rishava for yeah, some inspiration? Yeah, so when I, when I got released from my first major label deal, I think in 2013, 2014, I was listening to Toulouse's Gajah album and I was mm. just like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever heard. Mm. <laughs> and so I went to find where it was recorded, who was the producer, who are the people working on it. And I, I reached out to them and said like, hey, if I come to Bandung, can we talk? I'm working on some of my stuff. Mm. And so I worked on uh, my first EP with uh, producer Ari Renaldi, who also produces for Toulouse. Uh, Yura, Yunita. At the time, I met Yura in the studio and we were both just like really new to the whole music scene and now every it's nice to see everybody who makes music at that studio. Suddenly now they're all amazingly big stars doing incredible things. So uh, it's just really nice to be a part of that Indonesian music scene. In the Even in the little ways, you know, it's really, it feels like it's come full circle. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to share a little more about uh... What was so amazing for you uh, when you got the inspiration from uh, Tulu's album, Gaja? I think it's just something that is very new for me because I don't listen to a lot of uh, music from the region. And mm -hmm. I think that Tulu's first, that Gaja album also had a lot of elements of like folk R&B, had a lot of elements of like UK funk that I really like. Um, and it was just a really special album that meant a lot, lyrically also. And I just knew that if I wanted to make music, that these are the people that I need to get to know, you know. These are the people that I need to challenge myself to be like. And these are the people that I need to see as my counterparts. So, so, so that's you, kind of what went through, when, went through. Yeah, yeah. So you're quite familiar, familiar with uh, Bahasa lyric, eh? Uh, not bad, I think. <laughs> Okay, so you just released a new song titled Fool. How have your fans yeah. responded so far? And do you think, um, do you have a special target for this one? You know, thinking that it's going to be as big as your previous one? You know, I think the thing about making music is that you'll never know what's going to happen and who's going to listen, where they're going to listen, right? And I think once you set that kind of expectations for yourself, you're always going to be worried about what people think. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think I, I'd rather be worried about what I think. And I'd rather be worried about like, you know, I, I generally do not have any expectations for how many hits it gets or yeah. whatever, because I never even expected to be here in the first place, you know? <laughs> and so I, I, I really take every moment as a blessing and every listener as a blessing and every new interest that's a blessing too. And so far for Fool, I think it's a little different because it's the kind of song that I think is, the style is really new to me also, uh, even though it really does sound like a Cesare song. I think people are starting to get to see different sides of how I make music and yeah. what kind of music I like. So that's just uh, really interesting for me as an artist because after doing this for a while, you know, yeah. You, you really treasure the new exciting things and you treasure change more than you used to, I think. You know what we also treasure here? We, all, we treasure if you could uh, sing a little bit of Fool uh, for us. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes like a... Everywhere I look around me, all I see is you. What can I do? 
God, I feel like a fool. Oh, that's oh. beautiful. Oh, I feel like you're singing it to <laughs> me. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, you know what? We want to talk about so, much, so many things here, but we, um, and we've talked to you for a little bit. Now we want to, actually, one of the uh, things that we do here, we, we play a mini game uh, to get to know you better. How's that? Uh, sure. The, all right, so the game is called This or That, and Cesare uh, has to answer uh, quickly. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. All right, this or, this or that, lip sync or canceling your concert? <laughs> canceling my concert. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, For sure. So, okay, this is related to uh, uh, Achir's uh, question earlier. Um, Tulus or Petra Sihombing? Oh man, it's tough. <laughs> to do what? <laughs> Collaboration? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's even harder. <laughs> can, can I say both? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can, of course. Okay, maybe, maybe Petra, <laughs> because I've collaborated with Toulouse before. Oh, so. oh, okay, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, online concert with many audiences or offline concert with fewer audiences? Offline concert. I think I've really been doing all the online content these past two years <laughs> and I, I really miss having people in the room, you know, and hearing your voice bounce off the walls. Yeah. yeah. And, and That's just an amazing feeling. And, yeah. and, and feel their energy and you want to see them sing along as well, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you get a, you get a, get a, lot, a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of good feeling from that. Um, all right. So this one is related to fasting because we're in the month of Ramadan. Long fasting time with cold weather. Like in Alaska, or short <laughs> fasting time with hot weather. Long fasting time with cold weather. Oh, wow. oh okay. All I right. think people really underestimate how much the heat dehydrates you. Right. Yeah, right. right. And I think for me, like I'd rather be really hydrated and not eat <laughs> than be dehydrated. Okay. okay. Right. Good yeah. answer. All right. This one is uh, maybe a little political, right? Uh, <laughs> Singaporean laksa or padang sate? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pick one. Um, just sate padang. <laughs> because I grew, I grew up eating sate because my family has a sate business in Singapore. Wow. So okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm a sate taster since I was young. <laughs> and sate just has a special place in my heart, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go there. Well, I hope we're still around. All right. Um, last one would be making video clip in Bali or making video clip in Nepal. Wow. <laughs> I would say Nepal because of the hot thing. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, like because I think the heat is really dehydrating. <laughs> <laughs> so you prefer to go to Nepal, eh? Yeah, that. Yeah, that. All right, yeah. so you probably prefer being in our studio as well. So, hey, you know, whenever you're, you're in I Indonesia, yeah, do come uh, here and uh, perform in our studio because it's also very cold in here. Yes. <laughs> in the studio. <laughs>